So the Bad Batch is careening towards a showdown on Tantus in between the Rebel clone elements and the Galactic Empire surrounding Project Necromancers. So I figured it was time to take a closer look at Imperial cloning and the destruction of Kamino, which happened a few seasons back, and how that ties into this. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So as we get towards the series finale for The Bad Batch, obviously culminating in a showdown on Tantus, uh, in between both Imperial Forces and this rogue clone unit, the Bad Batch. I figured it was time to take a closer look at this secret Imperial cloning program at the heart of the facility on Tantus, and why it may explain the Empire's sort of willingness to destroy Kamino. So let's start with Project Necromancer. Now, we don't know a ton about Project Necromancer, but we can draw quite a few conclusions. We know it involves cloning surrounding M counts, or Metachlorian counts, which are directly tied to the ability to use the Force. Basically, it's either a program to make Force-sensitive clones, or more likely, a program to clone Emperor Palpatine to provide him immortality. Now, obviously, the plan to clone Palpatine eventually does culminate in a Palpatine clone present during the Battle of Exegol in the sequel trilogy, but it harkens all the way back to this program, and we know by the time of the Battle of Exegol they still haven't really perfected it because that clone is not in great shape. So it's most likely that Project Necromancer is tied to directly cloning the Emperor himself to create spare bodies for him to use in the event of his actual death, which we know does occur at the Battle of Endor. But then that raises a lot more questions, but the one I want to focus on today is when did Project Necromancer actually start? We have no concrete evidence to suggest that it started before the rise of the Empire, but I think there is a pretty good case for the possibility that some elements of Project Necromancer were going on during the time of the Galactic Republic in extreme secrecy. After all, Palpatine would have had access to some of the greatest cloners in the galaxy, the Kaminoans, and their facilities at Topoka City, the heart of the cloning operation that led to the creation of the clone army. On top of that, Kamino is a very secure location, being tucked away from the galaxy and hidden in a lot of ways, making it fairly hard for any individuals to stumble on whatever is being built there, be it a clone army or a spare clone body for the then Supreme Chancellor of the Republic. But that'd be a very bold move for Palpatine, at that point the leader of a democratic nation, to attempt to achieve immortality so he could rule forever. So, what exactly do we have backing that up? That's the real question. Well, let's talk about Kamino immediately following the end of the war. At the end of the war, the cloning program for the Empire was transferred from Topoka City to Wayland at the Mount Tantus facility, where it would continue on with some of its more secretive projects, while its main frontline project, the Clone Troopers, would be cancelled. This allowed them to downscale to a much smaller facility and allowed them to focus on the more unique experiments they were carrying out. Things like cloning the Zillow Beast and Project Necromancer, which was cloning the Emperor. But when they moved the cloning program from Kamino to Wayland and the Tantus facility, they destroyed Topoka City on Kamino. Now, there are definitely some other reasons for this. This likely could have been done to prevent a new clone army from being manufactured to oppose the Empire. But it also could have been done to cover up some more secretive projects that the Empire didn't want being discovered. What I'm saying is perhaps in the heart of Topoka City, buried in some lab deep, deep away from the construction of the clone army, there was a secret program to clone Force-capable beings that would ultimately manifest in Project Necromancer. This program could have been in the very early stages at the start of the Galactic Empire, but likely the Empire wanted to simply wipe it clean and carry it on in a much larger, more developed facility designed for that kind of program, and as such would have seen fit to destroy the Kamino facility to prevent the possible discovery of this ongoing military program. All of this to basically say that I do think it is entirely possible, and I'll even say in some ways likely, that the Imperial Project Necromancer actually began before the rise of the Galactic Empire, and would continue throughout its entire existence. In fact, it seems like Project Necromancer might have been one of the most difficult scientific endeavors the Empire actually undertook, taking the longest time to manifest any real results. It took longer than things like the Death Star Super Laser, which was a massive logistical and scientific endeavor. Now, it's entirely possible that we're going to find out in the next few weeks 
that the Bad Batch and their operations on Tantus significantly hampered the Empire's ability to complete this program, and that would explain the longevity of this project. But as it stands right now, it seems like it's an incredible undertaking for the Empire that is a sort of surprising contender for the most difficult scientific program the most powerful government the galaxy has ever seen has ever undertaken. But as I mentioned, the Empire abandoned the clone army when they transitioned from working on Kamino to working on Wayland. And that wasn't just because the clone army took a massive facility to manufacture and maintain. There's actually a lot of reasons why the Empire transitioned from the cloned clone troopers to the recruited or conscripted stormtroopers. And if you'd like to learn about why the Empire chose a, quite frankly, inferior form of soldier, I'll leave a link up here to my video on why they made that transition. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments whether you think Project Necromancer started during the days of the Republic, or do you think it was started right at the beginning of the reign of the Empire, and we simply saw it develop very quickly within the first few months of the new Imperial government. And if you have anything else to see me cover in Star Wars, you can let me know down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.